Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. I'm Brother Meyer, who are Israelite saints of Christ, and I have with me. Brother Cheskill. And we're bringing this truth, this Bible, the understanding of thou shall not bear a grudge against thy neighbor. I will not forgive you. Holding grudges. That's a nice class, man. A lot of people need to learn to not hold grudges. What does it mean to hold a grudge against somebody, man? What does it do to you when you holding a grudge? How do I stop holding grudges against this person who didn't did something foul to me? So we're going to learn that tonight through applying God's laws and the understanding of them and why God commanded so-called blacks, Hispanic, and natives whose father is of Negroid and Indian descent. You are the Israelites, the biblical Israelites that this Bible is written to. The right. ones who went into slavery on slave ships. The ones who've been carried to, a, to this land and learned their oppressor's language, their ways, and, and being uh, oppressed in this land right here today. We the people of God, and we got to wake up to who we are and apply God's laws that God gave us. Right. And one of those laws is not to hold grudges against your neighbor. So what you're going to need is a King James Version Bible with your apocryphal, a notepad, some highlighters, for you can take notes and you can tell your friends, you can tell brothers and sisters around you, your people, that they're the children of Israel, and they have to keep God's laws and faith in Christ. So let's open up with the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Quick class, let's get it. All right, this is the book of Revelations chapter 14 and verse 12. Right. Here's the patience of the saints. Right. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It says, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, which is Christ. Read. And I heard a voice from heaven. Read it over from the top. I'm sorry. Okay, from the top. Yep. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you have to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Christ. What does that mean? Meaning, you have to keep God's laws in the same spirit, the same understanding that Christ gave and left to us. Right. The same example he gave us. When he was keeping the laws, he did it on a high level with his people. He didn't just, here, bro, I gave you something to eat. I use this example all the time. Here, bro, here's something to eat. Dang, here. Yes, I'm helping him, but with the wrong spirit. I'm not doing it with the love of my brethren like Christ did. Christ left an example and he left a high example on how to apply the law between me and you. And we have to do that. That's why I say you got to keep the commandments of God and the faith. Meaning the way that Christ did it in the spirit that he left and how he did it and applied it with his people. That's the same example you must do. Because you can be keeping God's laws, but in the wrong way. You can be keeping God's laws with the wrong spirit. Let's get an example. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. 1 Timothy 1 verse 8. You got it? Yeah. Go ahead. All right. This, okay, is, the, this is the book of 1 yeah. Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. Right. But we know that the law is good. The law is good, right? The law is good. Read. If. What? If. What? If. Read. A man use it lawfully. If a man use it lawfully. Because you can be keeping these laws with an evil intent. You can be doing these laws to have, you can have hatred in your heart trying to keep a law. You can have malice. You can be keeping the feast day with strife in your heart. That's why you got to keep the command with a pure heart. Right. A pure heart. Not, yeah, bro, here's something to eat. So we have to learn how to keep these commandments with the perfect heart, with the faith of Christ. Just using the law saying I'm keeping it, that ain't enough. The Pharisees kept the law as well. Our righteousness have to exceed theirs. They was those who was persecuting the church, telling them you got to keep the law, keep the law. But they was hypocrites. They weren't keeping it with the right spirit. If you're going to keep these laws, if you're going to serve God, if you're going to worship the most high God of Israel, you got to do it this way. John chapter 4, verse 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. Go ahead. 
This is the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. The fruits of the spirit. You must be keeping the commandments, but you must have those fruits as well. You must have the spirit of Christ to be able to keep these laws lawfully, meaning rightly, with the right intent, with a pure heart. So what is the nice class? It's simply stop holding grudges. Stop holding grudges. Let's go to the law. Leviticus 19, verse 18. Simple law. We got to start applying it because by applying this, we stop the hatred amongst each other. Because guess what? In a society, somebody going to mess up. But these laws that God gave us is so perfect, they help us correct ourselves. When we apply them with the right spirit, everything fixes it itself. Everything fixes itself. But in the wrong spirit, all we do is add trouble to our situation. Right. So let's go to the law and see where is it located. Leviticus 19, verse 18, read it. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Thou shalt not avenge or bear any grudge. When you avenge your brother when he's telling you not to do that, Meaning you're going to seek vengeance upon this brother for whatever he have done wrong to you. Right. So it's letting you know that a person can mess up. This is a law to, to instruct our people. Hey, when your brother mess up, don't avenge him. You're supposed to have long suffering. You're supposed right. to be showing grace. Everybody can mess up. So the Lord is showing this law to teach you, hey, Stop trying to kill your brother for everything that he's doing wrong. Read on. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Read. I am the Lord. What would he say? I am the Lord. But why the Lord tell him he the Lord? Because he letting you know that vengeance is mine. You right. ain't got to go do that. I'm, I see what they doing. You think I can't see that? He gave us steps to go through to try to get our, to win our brother over. To show him his transgressions. Not bearing hatred for every wrong that he do. Every time he do something, you ready to kill him. He deserved to die. He deserved to be exposed. He deserved to be uh, beat down and stoned to death. Mm. Over one little simple mistake. Or he didn't repent the way you wanted him to repent. Or he didn't say sorry the way you wanted him to say sorry. Or they ain't changing enough for you. Well, you got steps to go through that. The Lord always give us instruction, wisdom to know how to apply these laws with our brothers and sisters who may have pride on them for a period of time, who may can't see what you see, right? It's an understanding thereof when we understand God's laws and how to apply it. With love for our neighbor. Once we have love for our neighbor, we know what to do and how to apply the law with that rebellious brother, with the brother who got pride, with that sister who won't listen, with that wife who won't listen to me at this very particular moment. Patience. That's what it's called. Grace. That's what it's called. Because they seem to need that because they can't see it. Right. But the reason you need to show it is because you love them like you love yourself. You're going to need it. Fact. You're going to need it. Because once you mess up and you can't see it, the same judgment you judge them by, the same judgment you will get. That's Matthew 7 and 1. So right. it shows us with the right spirit. Uh, let me be patient with this brother. He might not, can't, he might not see it right now. Read that part again. Yeah, from the top, read. All right. Leviticus 19 and 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Right. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Meaning stop trying to seek vengeance in your own hands. Because what they would do is you being offended by what they did. If they transgressed against you, let's say you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. And they went against you. Right. They made a mistake. They stole from you, right? They didn't talk behind your back. They discredited your name. They said something about your mama, fam. 
They disrespect your dead cousin, right? But it's showing you that, hey, everybody makes mistakes. And what they did, if you have hatred and if it makes you bitter, it will cause you to avenge them. You won't pay back. Right. You won't pay back. And once that bitterness seek in your heart, man, listen, man. Listen, man. Everything that they do, you hate them for it. Even after they said they saw it, you hate them. Yeah. Because you became bitter. You became bitter. You don't, you, and guess what? Now you can't sleep. Now every day you wake up, you looking for stuff to that, that point out them. Now you go into the pointing the finger battle. Now you're looking for scriptures that's only talking about them. You stop self-examinating. That's right. It's now, I'm already right. They're going to die. I'm going to look for every verse in the Bible to cut them. Not myself, because I'm right. Now you get puffed up with pride. That's what happens right. when you can become bitter. That's what. That's when hatred seep in. Hatred seeps into your spirit because you have holding a grudge against your brother. You have lost patience with the Most High. You feel like He ain't judging them, so you like, you know what? No, I'm taking it in my own hands. So the Lord telling you, "Hey, don't do that. I got everything." Go to Proverbs twenty and twenty-two. Proverbs twenty and twenty-two. Read. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 22. Say not thou, I will recompense evil. What? Say not thou, I will recompense evil. Read. But wait on the Lord. But what? But wait on the Lord. Read. And he shall save thee. And he shall save thee. Don't take it in your own mind and say, you know what? Nah, bro. I'm finna lay the, I'm finna lay the smack down. I'm finna spin the block. These folk taking too long. God, you taking too long. No, he need to be exposed. This sister need to be rebuked to she a scum, make her feel lower than the earth. Hmm. I'm finna spit on him. I'm finna spit on her. That sister need to know how I feel. And I won't pay back. I want her to feel like I feel. But you was right the whole time. But now you have left being right. To seek evil. Mm. To do evil for evil. You was right, brother. Sister, you was right. You did everything right. But now, since everything, not they ain't repenting like you want. Or they ain't doing what you want. They ain't changing the way you want to change. You got to remember one thing. We can't control nobody, man. Everybody got a role to play. So do you. It's a thing on the street. It's called don't let people trick you out your trick you out your spot. If you're in a spot, if you're easily provoked or you very sensitive, people can provoke you to move out of your position, man. Real talk. They'll trick you out your position, man. Don't let people trick you out. That's why it's uh necessary for us to take control of our spirit. And I'm talking to myself, because get what? I'm talking about myself when I'm talking about it. How y'all know I think I got experience to be able to teach you and tell y'all about it? Because I was the person I'm teaching y'all about. Hey, go to Titus 3 and 3. Titus 3 and 3. The Lord put us in these positions to learn. On both sides of the field, both parties learn. The person who's right and the person who's wrong. Because guess what? You go, the person who's right, he going through a lesson as well. Just like the person who needs to learn the lesson to repent of doing what they're doing or holding a the grudge. They need to learn the lesson. And the other person as well. They need to learn patience. They need to learn to be long-suffering. Right. Both parties learn. Both parties benefit. Titus 3 and 3. We was just like that. I was just like that. I had to repent. I had to calm down. I had to realize that I don't control nobody. Titus 3 and 3. Read it. This is the book of Titus, chapter 3, in verse 3. Right. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That was us. That was me. I get into it with my wife. 
more than y'all ever can see. I be about to lose it because I be feeling like she better listen to me. And if she don't listen to me, she got to get out of the house. If she don't listen to me, I feel like, all right, uh, uh, I be trying to find ways to make her learn a lesson. Who am I to? And I have to realize the same way I'm treating her, the same way I'm going to get treated. The most high so far, he make you go through how you treating him. He make others treat you the way you treat him. So the way you treat others, it's just a reflection of how you've been doing the Lord, brother. And so you've been, you've been breaking God's laws, then don't want to listen to him. Then when somebody else ain't listening to you, now you, now you offended. Mm. Imagine how the Lord feel. Mm. Imagine how the Lord feels about how you've been breaking all the laws willfully. We have fallen to willful sin. We are fighting the good fight to walk in this walk and, and strive lawfully. Right? We all have a condition of the battle where we're fighting the lust of the flesh. Now imagine, turn around and see how the Lord feel about you. So stop and think. The way you need grace, you need to be also given it. The way you need to be shown patience, you need to be also given it. Because the two greatest laws, love the most high with all your heart and soul, and the second is like unto it. Love thy brother like I love thyself. You ain't running from these laws. You have to keep the law in order for us to build. Right. It fixes all problems. It cuts everybody up. It shows you that no man is righteous, only the most high is righteous. And we need God's laws. And we need Christ to be able to keep God's laws. Without Christ, we couldn't keep these laws because we never had an example. Hmm. We didn't have an example to show us how to do it right. And he went through persecution to be able to show us, even through persecution, I'm going to apply the law to my people who not keeping it. He showed us the fruits of the Spirit, and therefore, we have no excuses. And he humbled himself down. And he dealt with temptation just like us. So we have no excuses. Read it again. All right, Titus chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, right. disobedient, right. deceived, right. serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. And hating one another. That was me. Had to repent. Got to continue to repent when I feel that spirit coming upon me. Or in certain situations, I get out of character. I have to stop, self-examinate, confess my faults, send up prayers, and acknowledge my sins and bring forth fruits meet for repentance. Therefore, I'm a perfect man. That's what it means to strive to be perfect. He said, uh, be perfect. Strive for perfection. Correcting yourself and acknowledging yourself and getting better is perfection. A just man falls seven times, but the wicked fall into mischief. Meaning he keep just going down the same path, not learning. But a just man going to learn from your mistakes. Right. That's what me and you got to do. Not holding judge, uh, grudges. Now, what happens or what makes me hold a grudge? What makes a person hold a grudge? Hatred, number one. But something had to happen for him to be able to say, man, I'm not satisfied. Mm. He's offended. He's easily offended. He's easily offended. Brother, punch me in the arm. Ah, man, dang. I'm so offended, I won't forgive him from punching me. I'm so offended, I want revenge. I'm so offended, I forget to acknowledge him and ask him, why did you do this? Right? I'm so offended, I don't even care what's his excuse anymore. I want straight judgment for him. I've lost my peace. I lost the love I have for him. 
I simply want him to die for what he's done. What does that boils down to? Hatred. Being offended. Easily offended. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11 verse 6. And another word is endurance. Endurance. We know what we signed up for as the children of Israel, knowing who we are, knowing that this work is a great deed, a great responsibility, and that work I'm speaking about is waking up our people, rebuking them, correcting them, giving them instructions, being patient with them, teaching them, and helping them, and suffering persecution. We signed up for this. We say yep. we believe. We know this the truth. And when we have truth, we speak it no matter what in all situations. But we have understanding and wisdom to know that everybody not going to get it. And we're going to have some that fight against us. But if I'm easily offended, I forgot the persecution that I have to deal with. Right. Fact. I forgot the persecution that come with this. Now I want to kill everybody who persecuted me. And I'm right. But Christ was also, he was right, but he suffered persecution. Holding a grudge comes from a person who was easily offended or who has forgotten that they have to endure all things. Right. They've forgotten the fruits of the spirit that they have to deal with. They have to show people who don't know any better. They have lost the love for their brother. Tell me if I'm going off. Help me out. Nah, that's facts. That's read, facts. read that. Matthew 11, 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, and verse 6. Come on. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Christ said, blessed is he who shall not be offended in me. Because he knows he's ready for what he signed up for. We are sheep that's headed to the slaughter, man. We know what we finna get into. Mm. Ain't, ain't no acting funny now. The Lord told us they, that they wouldn't heal us out. He still told us to go out here to prove ourselves, to prove that we believe in these scriptures, to prove that you love your nation above everybody on this planet. You got to prove that. The Lord is proving us by sending us through affliction. Right. Everybody got, who said they believe got to go through persecution and affliction. Therefore, when you pass, I can now say you believe because you stayed on the path. You actually kept the commandments and applied it with the spirit of Christ. Without wavering. Without going to the side. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. This is all a part of holding grudges. The reason of it. Why? How to stop it. What did Christ do? All right. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Read. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. We're going to what? Shall suffer persecution. We're going to what, bro? Suffer persecution. We signed up for persecution, brothers and sisters. So you can't use, when you're going through something, when somebody doing something wrong, when you're right, to now recompense them evil. You got to deal with it. You're actually supposed to be rejoiceful. Right. The only way you rejoice in that is by applying the fruits of the Spirit. That's the only way. He gave us a way out. With those fruits, we can right. now have our peace back. Because guess what? When you forgive somebody, it's not only for them to be get redemption. It's for you to get your peace because right. you was offended. They have trespassed against you. Right. You need your peace back. How are you going to get that? By forgiving them, knowing that you need forgiveness also, or you will need it because you know you can simply make a mistake too. Let's go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 17. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. 
All right, this is the book of Mark, chapter 4, and verse 17. Verse 16. 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. On what? Stony ground. So it's giving us an example of those who are built up their faith on stony ground. Go ahead. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And when they heard the word, they received it. You're an Israelite. You're the chosen people of God. Salvation is for you. God's laws, by applying this, we will rule the earth. Righteousness will be established. Everything will be the best it ever been. The blessings of God belong to you. The promises of God belong to you. The covenants belong to you. When they heard that, they received it with what? Uh, gladness. With gladness. Like, oh, snap. I'm, it's like I'm the chosen. Read. And have no root in themselves. Go ahead. And so endure but for a time. So they not rooted. They only endure for a time. Up until what? Read. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Why? Because they took it personal. They forgot that they ain't mad at you, bro. They mad at the most high. They don't have an indignation with you. They have an indignation with the most high. Because of the mm. word's sake, we immediately, they are offended. So when a person holding grudges, he offended. You can tell he's soft. He forgot the patience. He forgot the fruits. I forgot it, shoot. I'm talking about myself. Or she forgot, or you forgot it. You forgot, like, damn, why I'm so offended? They, they ain't doing nothing to me. They're doing it against God. Right. What are they, First Thessalonians 4 and 6? Let's see if I can find that, John. First Thessalonians 4 and 6. Uh, has no man go into fraud. It's 4 and 8. 8. 8, yeah. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 8. He therefore that despises, despises not man. He ain't despising the men. Read. But God. But he despising the most high. Read. Who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So you ain't mad at me. I took it personal, man. You mad at the most high. So why I'm so offended? Mm -hmm. Christ said don't be offended in me. You are offended easily. Read Mark 4 and 17 again. All right, Mark chapter 4, verse 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Right. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, what? immediately they are offended. They are what? They are offended. They are offended. So now, by them being offended, they don't want to forgive nothing. They didn't forgot the fruits of the Spirit. And they not they not satisfied. They ain't satisfied no more. Like, no, 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 no. Mm. I want you on your knees begging. I want you bleeding and crying. For me to say, I'll let you know when I'm I'm happy again. Now what you have done is you push God out of the judgment seat and put yourself there. Right. You didn't push God out of the judgment seat saying, no, you can't do it. I'm going to do it. Go back to Leviticus 19 and uh, 18. The reason why I say that is because the Lord told you, he said, I'm the Lord. Why he's got to say that to people? He let you know that I got this, bro. Read that part again. When we hold grudges and we easily offended, we basically pushing God out of the judgment seat but we know that God gave Christ all power to judge, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Christ has the power to judge. He's been given it by the Most High. Before you go to, go to John chapter 5, verse 22, to prove that Christ is the judge. When Christ come back, judgment will be given unto him. Right. John 5, 22, read that. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 22. Mm -hmm. For the Father judges no man. The Father judges no man, read. But has committed all judgment unto the Son. But he have committed all judgment unto the Son, which is Christ, the Messiah. So when Christ come back, he will have that ruling power. He will be reigning. We'll be joint heirs with Christ, but Christ is the king. Right. He will be on that judgment seat. Now go back to uh, Leviticus 19 and 18. So when you hold a grudge 
and you avenge your brother and you want recompense, you want to do, you want to uh, get some revenge, you're basically pushing Christ out the judgment seat and saying, I got it. But Christ himself judged no man mm. when he was here. Leviticus 19, 18, read. Yeah, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Right. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You should love your neighbor as yourself because you shouldn't be seeking vengeance for what he have done. Even though he offended you, you understand. Let me apply the fruits of the spirit. Let me apply some patience. Let me apply some grace with the brother. Let me forgive that brother for myself. Read. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. He reminded you, hey, I got it. You don't have to seek vengeance for what that brother have done to you. I have it. But we never satisfied. We want death for somebody offending us. Holding that grudge, you're going to seek vengeance. That's why the Lord telling you, don't do that. Because now you're pushing him out to see. Like he ain't got no, like he ain't going to do it the right way. Right. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 20. Yep. Hell and destruction are never full. What? Hell and destruction are never full. They are never full. Read. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. So the what? The eyes of man are never satisfied. The eyes of men are never satisfied. You ever played the same video over three, four, five times? <laughs> you done watched Friday 15,000 times. You done seen Home Alone 2,444,000 times. The eyes are not tired of seeing. What did that translate to? Mm. Brothers and sisters are never satisfied, satisfied. It's nothing you can do to them when they're holding a the grudge against you. You can't even repent. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Bro, I gave you $2 million, only stole a dollar. I want more. Because the eyes of men are not satisfied. We ain't never satisfied. We want that brother to die. We want that sister to die. I don't care how you did it. That ain't enough for me because I'm God. That's what you're doing when you're holding a grudge. That's what you're doing when you're avenging your, your neighbor, which is your fellow Israelite brother or sister. Right. That's what you're doing. Read it again. All right, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Never satisfied. But did Christ do this? Did Christ do that? Was he satisfied? He didn't condemn their brother or sister. That's what it goes into when you want to avenge your brother. You are condemning them. They can't repent from it. That grudge you're holding for being offended for what they have done, now you want to avenge them. Meaning, you're going to condemn them. Christ was correcting his people. When he seen a matter, he judged it. When he judged it, he called it a, a spade a spade. Meaning, if he was in the midst of sin, it was sin. If he wasn't, it wasn't. So judging is it wrong, but condemning is. When you hold a when you hold a grudge, it'll cause you to avenge your neighbor, meaning you now want them to be condemned. You want them to be judged. Right. But we in Christ. We in the faith in Christ. We keep the commandments in favor of Christ. What does that mean? Christ brought grace and truth, meaning a chance to be redeemed, even if you have failed. But it's a lesson and an understanding behind it, meaning you sincerely repent. You have godly sorrow. You have to give your neighbor a chance to repent. Repentance is godly sorrow. Godly sorrow, a conch, broken, contrite heart, meaning he's truly sorry for what he's done. And a change will come after that. Right. But if you're holding grudges, and avenging me, I have no chance to even to even bring forth that. You now want me to be condemned, even while being in Christ. Mm. Even after having an understanding that Christ died for me to be justified from all things. 
But you didn't give me that chance because you're holding a grudge against me. And now you're avenging me. Now you're out to kill me. But let's mm. kill that right now. Romans 8 and 1. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 1. Go ahead. Therefore, is there, there, I'm sorry, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. There are no, what? Read from the top one more time. Maybe I didn't understand you. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Read. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there is therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Christ, who have the understanding that we must keep the commandments in faith in Christ. That we're justified from all things, but now we have to walk in the spirit and right. not in the flesh. Right. Meaning you have to keep the commandments in faith in Christ with a pure heart, with the fruits of the spirit that Christ gave an example. Meaning you can't condemn me. Meaning I have a chance to change before Christ be sent back. Can't condemn me. All right. Let's go to James chapter 5, verse 7. We got to watch ourselves and what we're doing when somebody trans uh, against us or trespass against us. We have to be sure to understand that we also need forgiveness. James chapter 5, verse 7. Start down. The book of James, chapter 5, and verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Be what? Be patient. Be what? Be patient. Be patient. Read. Therefore, brethren, mm -hmm. unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. Right. And has long patience for it. How much patience? Long patience. Meaning he's waiting on the fruits, meaning Israel, because we are the first fruits. The children of Israel, we are the first fruits. Right. And guess what? He's waiting on these Israelites to wake up. He's waiting on us to prove ourselves. He's waiting on the tribes to wake up and repent and keep the commandments. He waiting on me and you. For he can send his son Christ to, send, to save us from the hand of our enemies. Read on. Until he received the early and latter rain. Right. Be ye also patient. Be ye, what he told us to do? Be ye also patient. Come on. Establish your hearts. Right. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Go ahead. Grudge not one against another. Read. Brethren, lest ye be condemned. Lest you be condemned. You hold a grudge, guess what? Mm. That's basically condemning somebody when you hold a grudge. Mm -hmm. They now have to be judged. Read. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. There's only one judge. It's only one judge. But you're now pushing Christ out the judgment seat. And now you're taking upon your, uh, your thoughts and understanding to condemn that person to death. That's what holding grudges leads to. Read. Uh, keep going. Uh, no, that's it. Read up nine again. All right, verse nine. Mm -hmm. Grudge not one against another, brethren. Right. Lest ye be condemned. Right. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Go to Sirach eight and five. We almost finished. Sirach chapter eight, verse five. Ecclesiasticus chapter eight and verse five out of your apocrypha. All right, go ahead. Read the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter eight and verse five. Right. Reproach not a man that turneth from sin. Don't try to correct the man who already turned from sin. You still holding the grudge? Dang, the brother stopped smoking. Leave him alone. Why you keep bringing it up? Mm. You know you when you used to smoke weed when you was high. Because you know you never really. Look at you. You still look high. Bro, I stopped smoking six years ago. Dang. But still, you still smoke weed. You still smoke weed. Bro, I stopped. I don't care though, bro. You, you shouldn't have never did it. <laughs> That's real. So I can't... What? So what's left for me? I'm basically condemned. Read. Reproach not a man that turned us from sin, but remember that we are all worthy of punishment. Slow down before you cast a condemnation. 
upon your brother by holding grudges, by seeking revenge, uh, being revengeful. The Lord's going to uh, pay vengeance back to those people. If right. he's still smoking weed or doing what you said he's going to do, the Lord's going to do that. Your love for your brother is to tell him, rebuke him. It's steps to it all. And those steps are simple. Titus 3 and 10. Titus chapter 3, verse 10. Titus 3, verse 10, read. All right, the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 10. A man that is an, a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. What do he do? Reject. What are we supposed to do? Reject. After what? The first and second admonishment. Admonition. 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 Right. Meaning, I came to the brother, I tried to help him, I dealt with him. He don't get it. What did Christ tell us to do after that? Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Let's read verse 14. All right. The book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 14. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. So after the first and second admonishment, dust off your feet, man. Dust off your feet. They're not hearing you. You're going to force it down his throat? You're going to make him hear you? You dust off your feet. That's what the Lord told us to do. Right. Go to Matthew 18, verse 15. Another example on how we deal with the brother who ain't, who ain't hearing us. Do we hold a grudge? No. Dust off our feet. I'm good. Matthew 18, 15. Read. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Okay, so I went to the brother. That's the first time. Read. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Read. But if he will not hear thee, then take thee, I'm sorry, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Right, so you're supposed to bring forth witnesses. To help him understand that, hey, man, you ain't hearing me. Maybe you'll hear if it, I brought a witness along for it. It could be fair. For you won't seem like I'm just right in my own eyes. I'm right. coming to you as a brother. I'm trying. But this person isn't a heretic. This is a person you, who offended you, right? This is a person you go to like, hey, you need to go show the brother. He probably offended me. It's not a heretic or a brother who's trying to scoff against the truth. It's just giving you different instances on how to deal with our people and be patient. Read. All right, verse 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Right. Meaning he, he didn't hear you or the witnesses. Now you take it to the church. Read. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen, a heathen man and a publican. A heathen man and a publican. Meaning, guess what? All right, this brother, he, he lost it, man. This dude, he can't hear. Bro, you, you acting like an unbeliever right now, bro. Mm. You acting like a heathen right now, man. But what did Christ tell us to do with people like this? Matthew 5 and 48. I read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father. No, I want to, um, what it is? 43. Matthew 5, 44. All right, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Now, is this talking about people about, uh, out of another nation? No. Christ is telling us to love our own people. Because he quoted verse 43. You have heard that it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Read. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. So this is that brother who won't listen to you. Read. Do good to them that hate you. Right. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. These are the people who won't listen. This guy and persecuted me. He didn't disrespect my name. This sister didn't talk about me. She's spreading gossip about me. I took her in front of the church. She's still in here. What the Lord told you to do for those people. You pray for your brothers and sisters. The love should never leave. Right. It's a time for everything under the sun. It's a time to embrace. It's a time to refrain from embracing. But I don't have, everybody's not your friend. But I'm definitely going to apply the law, statutes, commandments towards you because you are a brother. Right. You're not done. You're not condemned. But I have to remove myself to get my peace. 
I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to do good unto you when I see you. Because at the end of the day, I'm losing my peace by holding a grudge. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, let's start at verse 17. Romans 12, verse 17. The book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Don't pay a man evil for evil. He done evil to you. It's told us not to do it evil unto him. Read. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. As much that lieth in you. That's why the law said with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. As much that lieth in you is asking you, how much do you have? How much love do you have in you for your neighbor? For you can search out or seek to have peace with them. Read it again. If it be possible, as much as life in you, right. live peaceably with all men. Right. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written. For it is written. What? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, you won't have to hold no grudge. You trust the Lord. You are patient. Like it told us to be patient, long-suffering, showing the fruits of the Spirit, praying for our enemies, doing good unto those who do, who, uh, do, uh, who despitefully use us, who have yeah. cursed us. Read the next couple of verses. All right, verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. What are we supposed to do to our brother who, I, who, 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 who trespasses against me? Feed him. Read. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Meaning you're showing him his own spirit. It's showing you, nah, love is stronger than wickedness, man. That's what it's showing you. Read on. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. How you do that? Overcome evil with good because good is more powerful than right. evil. It has more benefits. A person see that and be like, dang, my bad, I probably been tripping. My bad, dog. I'm sorry. Appreciate that, man. You know, I've been holding grudges against you, bro. Thank you for the little sandwich you gave me. It makes you realize good is powerful than evil, man. We don't like doing that. You know what we don't like doing? We don't like being Christ first. Nobody want to be Christ first because you are now accepting the persecution. Mm. Nobody want to go through that. It hurt. It burns. Feel like we're being played. But you basically saying that Christ shouldn't have been Christ for us. Because if he wouldn't have did what he did, we wouldn't be here because we'd be condemned. So is it strength in it or is it weakness? It's strength in it. Look how many lives he saved by doing such an act. Such a spirit that walked upon this earth. It should have make you feel honorable for somebody to do such a deed for you. And only for you. So how should you repay somebody who did something like that for you? You do it for the next man. Who don't deserve it. That's how you do that. Who you don't think deserve it. Because what if the Lord said, man, them folks don't deserve it. I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it. Let's go to Luke 23, 34. Go to an example of what Christ did, man. Christ, Christ laid down his life for us. He could have held a grudge. He could have held a grudge again on folks for, for, uh, for offering him up. At that point, he was like, you know what, God? I ain't dying for the children of Israel no more. Forget these folk. Luke 23, 34. Read that. All right. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What? For they know not what they do. These people knew what they was doing. Well, in their own eyes, when well, in Christ's eyes, he was understanding that these people don't know what they're doing. They don't even know who they're doing it to. They don't, they don't have no understanding. So they ain't deserve it. But the Lord still asked for forgiveness for those people. He did not hold a grudge for the children of Israel. 
When I say those people, I'm speaking about you so-called blacks, Hispanics, whose fathers of Negro and Indian descent. We are those people who Christ died for and asked forgiveness for. Right. Who didn't, he didn't hold a grudge against. We are the people who Christ died for and only died for. Right. To prove that real quick, give me Acts chapter 13, verse 23. I want to prove that real quick. Some people may be new. And don't know when I say Christ only died for the children of Israel, they might think I'm tripping. When the book says it, Acts 13, 23, read. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 23. Of this man's seed has God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Raised unto who? Unto Israel. A what? A Savior. What's his name? Jesus. So who's the Savior? Jesus. Who did he die for? The children of Israel. That's right. Go back to Luke chapter 23, verse 34. All right, Luke 23, 34. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus, right. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Did he hold a grudge or did he ask for forgiveness for them? He prayed unto the Father and asked for forgiveness for them. That's the same thing we should be doing. We should be easily forgiving our brothers and sisters. Because once we do that, we get peace. Right. You need to be the first one to apologize. You need to be the first one to take the persecution. We need to be the first people to be Christ. To our brother who have trespassed against us. Right. If not, you're not walking in the faith. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 1, start at verse 1. We'll read down to 15. I read. All right, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing as we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, right. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Right, because sin actually besets us. It gets us out of our character. It gets us out of the spirit. Read. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There go that P word again. It says let us run with what? With patience the race that is set before us. Meaning we have to endure. We have to endure persecution, affliction, and all sorts of things to prove to the Father that, hey, we love you and we're going to be obedient no matter what. Right. Read. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. For, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What did he endure? His own people offering him up. Being stoned. Being spit on. His beard being plucked. Mm. Being hated. Being envied. Being lied on. He endured with joy. Read. Uh, endured the cross, despising the shame. Despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Read. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners right. against himself. Against himself because he went through all these hard trials and tribulations with his own people. Read. Lest ye be wary and faint in your mind. So it's telling us consider what he went through for we won't be so faint hearted. And ready to give up when we're going through it. Right. Because he left an example for us and suffered for us. For we can have an example on how to get through dealing with your brother who trespassed against you. Should I hold a grudge or should I avenge my own revenge or should I easily forgive him? Read. Mm. Verse 4. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. What are we doing? Striving against sin. Come on. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Right. Because what you're going through is what the Lord wants you to go through. For you can be able to teach on this lesson and give an exhortation to those who are not yet to go through it. Remember, it's, both, it's a lesson for both parties. The person who've been trespassed against and the trespasser. He has to learn, and the person who's been trespassed against, they have to learn. Learn what? The fruits of the spirit. Patience, long-suffering, forgiveness, uh, being pure-hearted, 
They have to learn these things. Read on. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Go ahead. chastised. Right. And scourges every son whom he receiveth. Go ahead. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. So you have to do what first? Endure chastening. You have to endure it. You have to go through it. Read. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Because if you don't go through nothing, that's showing you that God don't love you. Because God ain't chastising you. Right. Are you a partaker or not? Are you in it? Did you go through the fight too? We don't respect people who've been on the field and passed the test. Yeah, you went out there, but did you pass? Remember, it was those who were set on stony ground who endured just for a time. And then when that persecution and affliction came, guess what? They easily offended. Now you want to hold a grudge. But did you endure? Did you go all the way through? Did you learn? Did you increase? Did you do it joyfully? Verse 11. We're almost done. Verse 15, we're done. Verse 11. Verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Why don't it feel joyous? Because we're going through it. We're not understanding why we're going through it yet. Right. That's why it's not joyous. But if you understood why you was going through, I bet money you'd be excited because you know something is coming out of this for me. Right. I'm gaining experience. I'm gaining hope. I'm gaining faith. We don't look at chastisement like that. We look at chastisement as some God picking with me or something. Or these folks trying to play with me. Or this brother think I'm weak. He think I'm, a, he think I'm in Christianity. I got to slap fire to this dude because he think I'm weak. I got something to prove. Mm. Definition, I got pride on me. I think I'm somebody. I'm not, I don't supposed to be going through this. I'm greater than my Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord went through stuff like this. So when you have that type of spirit, you basically say, I'm better than the Lord. I don't deserve this. You know who my mama is? You know what my name is? Dude tried to play me? Now you want revenge. Read on. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. But is what? But grievous. That's how we feel, read. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Afterward, meaning what? You gotta endure. Right. This is what happens when you actually apply the scriptures after by, while going through that chastisement, being afflicted, being persecuted. Afterward, it produces what, bro? The peaceable fruit. The of, what? The peaceable. No, I'm bitter afterward. The peaceable. The only way you bitter out there is you got holding the grudge. The only way you bitter if you seeking revenge. The only way you bitter if you is not satisfied. Mm. Right. But when you forgive the person, you long suffering. I'm peaceful. Everybody said, "Usa." Mm -hmm. You come around smiling like it's all good, bro. All praise to the Most High. You got a peace about yourself. Go ahead and read that part again. But afterward, it yieldeth what? Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Which are what? Which are exercised thereby. You got to exercise the fruits of the Spirit with your brother who have trespassed against you. That's the only way you're going to get some peace, fam. That's the only way you're going to yeah. produce righteousness. If you apply with the right spirit, you got to keep the commandments of God in the faith of Christ. That's the only way you get this peaceable fruit. For those who are exercised thereby. Read. I keep going? Yeah. All right, verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down in the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way and let it rather be healed. Read. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Because you have to make peace with your people, man. You have to apply these scriptures with your people. You have to be pure hearted. I mean, you got to be doing this sincerely and in truth. Read. Verse 15. 
looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest the, any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and, therefi, and thereby many be defiled. Many be defiled because they get bitter behind what they have went through and have not learned the lesson that God intended for them when they was being chastised. Right. Because they did not exercise the fruits of the Spirit while keeping the commandments. They have holded a grudge, and now they seek revenge. They have lost patience. They did not endure. They was easily offended. Last scripture. Read it all over again. What law do we learn about? Leviticus 19 and 18. Holding grudges. We got to start holding grudges, bro. It may seem hard because we don't truly understand the love of our brother the way we should have it at this moment. But you will increase in it because the Lord going to be dealing with you. Right. Read that. Leviticus 19 and 18. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. The children of thy people. The children of thy people are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives. Right. He's father of Negro to Indian descent. We are the thy people. We are the children of Israel. These laws was given to. This is our heritage, not a religion. This is our culture. This is our way of life. But we have to keep these commandments in the faith of Christ. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. As thy what? As thyself. Read. I am the Lord. God said, I'm the Lord. I'm the one who seeks vengeance. You need not to do that. You don't have to do that. Forgive your brothers and sisters and live peaceably with all men. I'm Brother Maya and I got Brother Chesakel. And we give all praise to the Most High and His Son Christ for allowing us to That's go in right. the scriptures, understand how to apply God's laws, and better our nation. We're on the rise. The 12 tribes are on the rise, and we will, we will rule this earth in righteousness. Thus That's said right. the Lord. Esau is the end of the earth, but Jacob is the beginning, meaning we got next. Y'all stay strong, stay prayed up. Send your arms to ISOC, uh Alabama, cash out. If you want to send arms to help push the truth, if not, share the class. If not, send some fringes. If not, help somebody learn this lesson by you applying it. Endure chastisement from the Lord. Share the class, share the class, and um, endure, man. Most High Christ bless. With that we say, Shalom. Shalom.